Hey, Warrior Saints, welcome to St. George. We unleash our greatness by living a crucifixional life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. I'm not really a... I'm not really comfortable with confessing Christ in public. Now, I know you may say that's kind of strange. I mean, me being the priest and all, you would think that it would be natural for me to confess our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ publicly. But I'm always a little bit leery. There's that discomfort that goes with, you know, the, the images we have in our minds of those people who are out there on the, you know, on the street corners raising their Bibles or with megaphones and, and preaching that people are, are going to go to hell, i.e. like the Westboro Baptist people. And so it becomes uncomfortable. And yet, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has asked us, in this morning's gospel, to confess him. We'll see about that in just one moment. I had a very, very beautiful, powerful experience earlier this week. I was at the Apple Store in Scottsdale Quarter, having some work done on my computer. And the gentleman, the young man that I was working with today, was great. He was f absolutely fabulous. I am pretty tech savvy, not savvy, uh, tech savvy enough, and so they, he was helping me figure out all the problems. And in the midst of the conversation, you know, as we were, I was ruining all of the, the frustrations I had over the computer and how he was going to save the day with all of his, his Mac knowledge, it eventually came to, the, to my mind. I'm like, this is a nice young man. So I said to him, just at the end of the whole conversation, I said, so, any young women in your life? I mean, is there a nice lady? And he said, no, not really. And so I said to him, why don't you come to my church, man? We got all kinds of pretty girls. You know, I'll introduce you to some. And he said something interesting to me. You know, I've never really been to church. Like, I expected him to say something about, like, oh, don't make fun of, you know, pretty girls in your church, or I don't want to, you know, I expected something to deal with, you know, me wanting to set him up. But his response was, you know, I've never really been to church. In all my life, he said, I've never been to church. And I said at that moment, Dave, his name was Dave, why don't you come? You're welcome to come, to be with us. Here's what we're teaching. And I taught him about Jesus' life, the cross, the empty tomb, and how we are called to be crucifixional in following Christ. It wasn't a very long conversation. It was all of, literally, that part of the conversation was all of like a minute. But I said to him, look, why don't you come? Here's the message. We're not playing all the rest of those games. You're not going to find Westboro Baptist here, at least God forbid, I hope not. But you're going to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ proclaimed. Welcome. Now, I don't know if he's ever going to come. I don't know. But you know what? The gospel this morning that we just heard from chapter 10 of Matthew doesn't make that my responsibility. It does, however, say to us that the Lord has asked all of us to acknowledge him before men. And if we do that, he will likewise acknowledge us before God, his Father, in heaven. And he also gives us the converse, that if you deny me, guess what? I will also deny you before my Father who is in heaven. Now, this word acknowledge, it's an interesting word in the, in the Greek text. It really means to confess. The reason they translate it acknowledge instead of confess, it doesn't mean confess in the way that I did a, a sin and I confess my sins, or that I've committed a crime and therefore I will come clean and confess my crime. It means confess, to speak about, to give a word about, to explain, to acknowledge, is how they translate it, to confess your faith and belief, in this case, in Jesus Christ. So this word, if you confess me before the Lord, sorry, if you confess me the Lord before the world, I also, says the Lord, will confess you before God in heaven. Beautiful text. The promise there is great. It is to say that if we live life, and use our words to confess our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That when that moment comes and we stand before God the Father, before the, as we say, the dread judgment seat, that we will have an advocate there confessing us also. In this case, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the conqueror over death. And so as we are called to witness, as we are called to share and confess our faith in Christ, there's a few things we want to discuss. One is, what is it we confess? Who do we confess it to? How do we do it? And what should we be prepared to receive in response? Now, one of the things that I think we're all uncomfortable about is, is that guy on the street corner or that guy at the college campus with the megaphone and holding his Bible in the air preaching fire and brimstone, right? We're all kind of leery of that guy. I think somewhere inside, that guy's kind of leery of himself. 
Because somewhere, I think, there must be something inside him that says this really isn't the fullness of the scriptural message. And we're called not to do that. Not to be that. You see, the how we do it is in human interaction. It was very interesting to me. This is why this Apple Store encounter really it, it opened my, my eyes. Like I didn't come in talking about Jesus. I didn't come in throwing the Bible at him. I didn't come in condemning him to death. I came in just as a human being, some guy whose computer was broken, and I was with some guy who could fix my computer. And so we had a human connection. We began to talk and build rapport. We began to build rapport. I may never see Dave again, and he may never see me again, but at that moment, there was a human connection. Two human beings talking about something in common, in this case, my broken computer, and we built rapport. And so the first thing is that humans learn and listen to other human beings. Human beings learn and listen to those who they have rapport built with. And so the first task on how do we do that, how do we confess Christ, it is that in, in all interactions, whether it's with one another in the church, some guy on the street, some gal in the grocery store, or someone at the Apple store, with any person that we come in contact with, our first responsibility is to be a human being and build rapport with them, to connect with them, to say to them, I hear you, do you hear me? I see you, do you see me? I love you, do you love me? The very first step in confessing Christ is to build a connection with another human being. Because I promise you this, just like this young man Dave, after we had built this brief rapport over the failings of my computer, he was open and primed for what I had to say to him. So the first thing, how do we do that? Build rapport with other human beings. Connect. That's all that that really means. And people who connect are willing to listen to those whom they connect with. So the second step. What is it that we should confess? That's always a funny thing. I think that priests, myself included, often leave that out in sermons about witnessing. What is it that we're supposed to witness? I mean, what is it that Christ has said to us? Go tell the world. Because indeed, it is good news, and it is our responsibility to share that good news with the world. But what is that? I think, beloved, it's pretty simple. And as you know, simple does not mean e uh, easy. But I think it is pretty simple and pretty basic. And that is two things. To preach that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ died on the cross. To tell the world that the Master the creator, the architect of all that is, actually willingly, voluntarily allowed himself to go to death on our behalf. It's that simple. And the second part of it is, the really good news is that, you know what, that death, it wasn't able to hold him because he was the Lord of all and that he was raised by the glory of the Father on the third day. That's it. That's the message. That's all I told Dave at Apple was that, hey, look, You've never been to church before, but let me just give you the quick message that, that Jesus was, was God in the flesh, a human being and the divine son of God at the same time, not mixed up. Just he was the son of God and he died on the cross, actually died on the cross, but he was raised on the third day. That was the content of my preaching today. And the second part of that content is this. Hey, guess what? You and I, we're called to be crucifixional and follow him. And do the same thing. That doesn't necessarily, as we know, we talk about it here all the time. That doesn't necessarily mean that we are to be, uh, that we are to die on a cross. Though, if we're asked to be martyrs, may it be so. But it is by taking our cross that we deny ourselves. That we might live unto others. And that by following that way, it's the only way that works. That's what I ended up saying to Dave at the end. I said, look, follow Christ. That's it. Just do what he asks us to do, and that is to sacrifice ourselves for the sake of other. And guess what? It seems funny. It seems counterintuitive. It seems like in that you lose, and yet it's the only thing that works. The only way that we truly win is to follow Christ. And that's the content of the message. And you can see that manifest itself all over the place, right? We talk about it all the time. You want to be healthy? You love Doritos? You have to be crucifixional. You can't eat Doritos. You want to have a good marriage? Get into a, a dispute with husband or wife? You have to be crucifixional and apologize. Make peace. You want to be in good relation with God? You have to be crucifixional, sacrificing your own ego and your own needs and your own desires to serve and worship our God. 
You understand? That is the simple message, and it's really simple to share with other people. And you can see that across all as, uh, aspects of life. So, beloved in Christ, begin with rapport. The message is simple. And last, and here we end, we come to a conclusion. Be prepared that not everybody wants this message. There are some people who do not want to follow Christ, and that's their business. You see, in this text, it was interesting, I was reading it, preparing. It doesn't say, Jesus doesn't say, go out and confess, uh, confess me before men and convert them. He just says, go confess. That's it. Confess that the Lord, that Jesus is the Lord. Confess me before all the world. And leave the conversion part to the Holy Spirit. Let him do his business. We have to do our business by speaking that word. But not everybody wants to accept that word. And that's okay. Let them deal directly with God. Let the Holy Spirit deal directly with them. That's between them and God. They will account on the last day, as will you and I on the last day. So as a conclusion, remember, it's very simple and yet very challenging. Very uncomfortable. But the more we do it, the more we become the more we adhere to today's gospel commandment. Begin by building rapport. Be human with other people. Speak to them the very simplest, uh, simple part of the message of the gospel of Christ, the cross and the empty tomb. And three, be prepared that some may and some may not choose to accept that message. And it is what it is. And there it concludes confessing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ before the world. May he was raised by the glory of the Father on the third day, give you strength to hear the gospel and to preach the gospel and bless and keep you. Amen. Hey, hey, warrior saints, thank you for being with us. To learn more on this topic and many, many others, visit us at warriorsaints.org and subscribe to the Way of the Warrior Saint Weekly. Till then, keep walking on the way of the warrior saint.